the event is very, very, very good for a company as ourselves that is so focused on manufacturing, in this case on, on lentivara vectors. And there are many moments that could be highlighted. I mean, for instance, we are having very relevant meetings with customers ongoing, potential customers, but also partners or companies developing different technologies. Also, the oral presentations and the panels, they are being very good. So in general, uh, there are different kind of moments that could be like, uh, well, very, very important for, for us as a company. This is one of the things that we like more about this event, that there are very specialized uh, like kind of uh, presentations and panels. And indeed, about Lentivara vectors, there were specific presentations talking about manufacturing and also about uh, their functionality, potential use, and so on. So yeah, it was very, very focused. And from my point of view, well, there are diff different reasons why Lentivara vectors are being uh, used as a gene delivery technology and why they are being used more and more now. And the main reason is because they have been proved to be very efficient and very safe for ex vivo applications. But now more and more, they are also being used as gene therapy for in vivo applications. And this is something that we as a Lentivara Vector CMO can realize as for instance, ourselves are working more than five in vivo programs at the moment. So yeah, this is some of the of the reasons why. So the, the biggest manufacturing challenges are always linked to cost effectiveness. And the way to address that is to get greater like uh, titers and also purer vectors. So for that, there are different ways like uh, working the producer's line, also all along the different uh, upstream manufacturing steps, the kind of reactor system that is selected is very important, but also all along the DSP, the purification as the purity has a great impact in terms of the functionality. And therefore, the more functional a vector is, the more cost effective, finally, the manufacturing process. So I will highlight this uh, cost effectiveness in order to reach the biggest population as possible in future to be treated with this kind of uh, cell or gene therapies. So what I would like to see in 2023 is further development on the cell line itself to make it more productive so that the productivity per cell is increased and therefore with the same reactor size we can get greater and again, having this impact on cost effectiveness that we were talking before. And secondly, in terms of DSP, I think that's something that would be very important during this year is the advance on this kind of purification technologies really linked to chromatography purification that should be more selective towards these kind of vectors to reach a greater recovery, better purity, which has an impact also specifically on these uh, in vivo programs that are running more and more. So I think that it will evolve towards a much more predictive manufacturing approach. Automation will be key, digitalization as well, and reproducibility. So at the end of the day, the commercial batches to be manufactured will be more and more frequent. We will gain experience on that. So the production of this kind of very sophisticated therapies nowadays would be more similar to the to the classical ones that have been manufacturing for years and years. Yeah. We are planning to really focus on being prepared for commercial stages. And this is linked to the fact that some of the partners we are working for since years, they are very close to these commercial phases. So we are doing all the steps that are needed to go for commercial phases along the European EMA requirements, as well as the American FDA ones. So this will be the main, the main uh, objective for this year, 2023, as a company. And also, of course, continue working on all the innovation programs we do have within our R&D department and process optimization departments, whose um, main aim is, uh, of course, giving answer to the real market demand. So this is also key because otherwise, if a CMO is not innovating, 
every day is very difficult to really adapt to what the market is really, really demanding nowadays.